There we go. Ladies and gentlemen, so I want all eyes at the front of the class like a motherfucking Tupac. I got a huge fear of public speaking, so today I'm gonna be conquering one of my fears. Hey, this is private property, sir. Please, I just gotta get over this fear, like briefly. I'm gonna be like 10 minutes. I'm just gonna talk until I drop. No, I need to overcome this fear, like it's urgent. It's seriously. Students, please support. UBC, where's the support for real though? But you can't talk private property, bro. Don't even. I was just gonna dip out completely. I'm like, all right, I'm done. I'm finished. But I did find like a little fortune. It says the barriers you may face will be overcome. So this is just motivation to keep pushing. To keep going. We found it on the ground right when we were about to leave. Gives me a little bit of motivation, a little bit of spice to double back. All right, ladies and gentlemen. So I just like to apologize for coming across quite brash in the beginning, but like this is a fear that I really have to overcome. Like I'm just gonna go till I can't talk anymore. Like I'm very scared of this fear, so I may just ramble off for a long time because I really have a huge fear and I need to get over it. So please, guys, please give me some support. Like I really need your support here. So I'm just gonna ramble off for as long as possible just to face this fear. So everybody, I need some hands, I need some claps, I need some support. I'm in here by myself. So I'm just gonna talk to her. I dropped like a bag of potatoes. <laughs> Motherfucker, I dropped his ass, but my fear got Stop! You violated the law. So, anyways, he got his ass dropped and I saw this fear. Buddy thought he was in the NFL or something. He tried to rush me, and I was like, I'm not having this. I'm not getting dropped by this kid. Honestly, you should press charges. Nah, definitely not. I'm not going out Bro, like that. Was Listen, if he would have dropped me, I would have thought about it. But nah, we're, we're just, <laughs> just joking. I would never do that. Unless I'm like really needing to make a come up. But honestly, the stress versus the come up. Like, and he's a college student. I honestly didn't think the students were like that. Like, usually they just sit down, they're doing their thing, they're all calm and collected. But this kid like rushed and came out of nowhere. I don't know what he was gonna do. He came for the tackle, so I took, boy, see ya. Continue the job. Imagine though, he just picks up my legs and just. <laughs> I wouldn't press charges. I just. No, I'm from a different place, so you don't do that. I'm glad I got that little motivational, inspirational note, because the second time around, I'm like, all right, I'm going in full blitz. That kid got squashed like a bug. <laughs> I don't know. He's trying to be like a superhero. He's like, I like Becky over here. I'm gonna impress her. I'm gonna try to be the man. I'm gonna get my name up in this system, in this world. It didn't work. You pushing him is not cool either. Like, let's not condone that. Either. I'm not just gonna let him yeah, fucking no, no, take know, me out. But shout out to that kid though. Shout out to that kid for real. All love. He helped your career. He did. He honestly did. One of the most common fears that is deeply embedded in the human spirit, for obvious reasons, is the fear of heights. Now, this has got to be at the top of my list and probably 99.9% .9 of people on this earth list. And that's because us as humans, our only job is to survive and recreate on planet Earth. And that's why we're still here because we're pretty darn good at it. And when it comes to heights, your body naturally is like, I'm not gonna jump off here because I'm gonna perish and I'm not gonna be here any longer. So that's why fear is in place to stop you from doing such silly things. And it's gotta be one of the worst fears, especially for myself. I have developed this fear from my mom. We would go on long, lengthy road trips and she would see like a little drop off and she'd be hugging her kneecaps and freaking out. So I feel like subconsciously I have picked up this fear from her. But it's time that I grow some hair on my nuts and I grow a beard and I become a real man and I conquer this fear. And what I'm about to do is just highly unnatural. I'm about to jump off a bridge and free fall head first for 170 feet. V2 with the infamous 160 foot drop. But there's many more things coming into play this time. Like I don't have underwear on so my dick is hanging out. I think that's the biggest fear. Like what if I just get nervous and I get hard or something? <laughs> like I was actually thinking about that. You're nervous or like in shock. All the blood flow. And plus they have a harness. This video actually makes sense though because I've already done this once. We lost the footage and now I'm doing it again to like solidify that I've actually conquered the fear. Physically, mentally, spiritually, actually conquered the fear. But look at the view. Still look at the drop. That's just something you can't get over. Jumping today? Yeah, I just gotta sign the waiver for my life. Yeah. Like and all this stuff, I don't want that in my subconscious before I jump. But I'll say it right. It's like the last thing you want to know before you're about to jump. The core of my snack. Can you front flip? I would suggest doing the back flip. I can't do a back flip. I mean, the front flip is harder. What are we doing, bro? I gotta know. Oh, God. I don't know if I'm that ballsy to do a front flip. Be ready for a possible flip. Ah, why am I gonna do this again? Can I just do an actual prayer? In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, God, I pray to be safe. <laughs> Everything's good. Everything's good. I don't know about a front flip. Just let me get my zone. I'm grateful. I'm grateful. Just yeah. send it! Lay down, came on. Oh, God, oh, no oh, it's still just scary, but I'm thankful though. Thankful though. Oh, yeah! Oh God, I love it though. But I don't. Oh, oh, oh. oh God, I really love it, but I really don't. Oh glory to God. Thank you God for everything. I will never do this. I think I just like fell forward and it happened to be a front flip. You can lie and tell everyone it was a super conscious. <laughs> and whole tight graphic state of mind, cause it sees division two, and he's heavy on his grind. So we represent kilo, and that's a matter of time. Kilo. All the footage I had got completely wiped out. <laughs> So I have to do all this stuff again. Pop in the back, grab a couple trench ones, we're gonna go. You wanted to go through that twice. At least this time I'm a little more comfortable. God 
Damn, look at that thing. He's an old rescue of ours, got dropped off a couple of years ago. In not oh, okay. very good condition. Very underweight, all kinds oh, of wow. issues. So every now and then they come through with rescues. And we held on to Goober because he's just a total sweetheart. What about this one? He's a bit more territorial, so you gotta watch yourself around. It's like, man, I need to smoke. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he very much gives off those vibes. These hairs are all very sensitive. They can pick up sound, vibration, air pressure. And that's how they see their world. But the hairs right on the bum there, those are called urticating CT. Those are like shards of fiberglass, except they're barbed on the end. If something tries to eat them or something tries to chase them down their den, they'll both have that lining their enclosure and they'll kick them off with their back legs. You get a face full of that, a nose full of that, and well, you're gonna know next time. Try not to eat the tarantula. And if it's not that, then it's the fangs. The fangs are about a little less than a centimeter, and they're very strong, but because the venom is so mild, it's more just the creepy factor of the fangs going in. This is a brachypelma tarantula. These don't pose a threat. Anybody who gets bit by this, it's not gonna kill them. It's just uh, that fear factor of what it is, it's, yeah. It's intimidating. Yeah. But at the end of the day, my bite is so much worse than this one's. Daddy, chill. These guys are effectively blind, despite having eight eyes. Uh, they're very much hearing through vibrations, through senses. Like, she can feel me touching the dirt over here. But if I just reach in with my finger, she might think it's quick, and I don't really want to go there. They do, in a sense, smell through their hands. If she reached out and grabbed my finger, she's going to take a second and go, oh, no, that's not that, and she'll let it go. I don't take the chance, though. This species, females, you're looking at 20 to 30 years, depending. Wow. Whoa. Now, the males, you're looking at seven to nine years. So males, at this point, they're just looking to find a female to breed with. And a lot of times, a female will eat the male after that big meal to crap make an egg. So yeah, this is a Brachypelma smith. This is your quintessential Hollywood tarantula. Really good starter pet, often used in films because they do have these bright, almost toxic looking colors, despite the fact they're not especially toxic. Uh, and as you can tell, they have this extremely relaxed demeanor. Oh, what is this tree and why does it have a mustache? It really likes your hair last time too. I think it's a good look on you. I think this is actually good because it like brings awareness that they're not threatening Very in a much. way. <laughs> hey, sweetheart. Got a big old scorpion back there too. Personally, I'm not that experienced holding scorpions. And it's yet. super fast. Too. It's like, yeah, it comes gets... down pretty quick. Generally, when you're looking at scorpions, a good rule of thumb: dainty little claws generally means they pack a punch. Big Lock claws means that they're using those claws, and the venom is not something they utilize as much. I always hear people ask me, tarantulas are poisonous. Poison and venom are both toxic, but they function very different. If you bite something or lick something and you get really sick, it's poisonous. If something bites you or stings you and you get very sick, it's venomous. If something bites itself and you get sick, that's voodoo. If you bite yourself, well, that's just kinky. That is kinky. Uh, so these guys are brightly colored because a lot of things that eat them know about the urticating hairs. And when you're this small and delicate, better to be seen and have predators have an aversive reaction to you. That's a little sketchy straight out of the cage, right into my neck. Oh, just straight out of his sleep. She's our biggest snake. Surrendered to us because the old owners, they got a little afraid of her because she moved. A lot of living things move. This is how they get around. Every time she moved, they were like, well, she's going to kill us all, so feed her something. So they fed her a lot. She might get a little bit squeezy here and there. They're not trying to suffocate. They're not trying to be malicious. It's just that if she falls, she's not going to land on her feet. You know you're very strong. That is actually so strong. The force is just like completely right. taking my arm back. That's that's what that is. <laughs> oh, God. There we go. Good old anchor hold around your throat. Mm. I love how it makes that sound. Yeah. Oh God. It just like hissed all the way up my ear. God, that was creepy. <laughs> Sounded like the devil. <laughs> No, I was married to that. <sighs> it's cool. Definitely wouldn't want that as a pet, though. I'm not want that in my house. <laughs> it's not for everyone. Sometimes you're like, yeah, I'm comfortable with this thing. Like, it's nice. But if you mess up, it's die. You do something improper. Yeah. One of the most common fears that we can all relate to on a human level is the fear of regret. It's something that I have struggled with the moment I was born. I know damn well I have so many things in my past that I've regretted. Whether it be relationship, the wrong path, the right path, the right people, the wrong people. Being in this situation, that situation. You get caught up in your head for days and days. Thinking about regret. So to finally conquer this fear, I'm gonna be getting one of the most atrocious, disgusting, regretful tattoos I have ever seen in my life. So at the top it says super swag. You go down a little more and it's a unicorn. You go down a little more and it says mama's number one bull. I don't want this on my body. The moment I get this, I'm gonna need to get it removed and taken off my body immediately. I don't know if I'm conquering that fear or if I'm just adding to the pile of regret. What do you guys think about that tattoo? Are you heavy metal? Or? I think so. <laughs> I like it. I do it. What's the best spot? I'm trying to like hide it. I was thinking like the ass, like a unicorn on the ass is kind of cool. Yeah, you know what? Might get fangs. Oh, shit. I'm regretting it already. Honestly, with just the unicorn, like, would it be a bad tattoo? The colors are kind of sus. Mama's number one boy, like, what the fuck is that? Super swag, like, that word is played out. <sighs> that is huge. All right. <laughs> Beyond regretful. I actually feel like a pit in my stomach and in my soul. 
tattoo looks good on his part. It's just the concept is obviously very regretful. Oh, it's kind of growing on me. Like, it's very colorful. It's gonna have to grow on me because it's there for the rest of my life, so. My leg is absolutely numb. Cannot feel my leg, but we're powering through it. Just gonna listen to a podcast and pass out till it's finished. And just contemplate and think about the regret. This is like one of the hardest tattoos you've ever done. The most masculine. No, really. What's the weirdest tattoo you've ever done? Uh, you don't wanna know. There's some weird people. There's some weird people as I'm getting a unicorn tattoo that says Mama's Boy. Super swag on the top. Maybe I'm the weirdest of them all. Mama, take me home. There's the tattoo.